What's up guys, Justin here with theseketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna go in depth on the tools contained inside of Fredo 6's extension for drawing on surfaces, tools on surface. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you're looking for more SketchUp extension tutorials, you can check out my ultimate extensions guide. This is a guide that I put together specifically to help you find information and tutorials on SketchUp extensions more easily. You can check that out at theSketchupessentials.com slash extensions extensions, that is a free tool that you can access by clicking the get access here button. But in today's video, we're going to check out tools on surface. Tools on surface is an extension from Fredo 6 that basically allows you to draw on different surfaces using a few different tools. Um, this is a paid extension now. So um, the extension can be downloaded for $12 um, to get a perpetual license just on this. Or I usually recommend that you just get the Fredo 6 bundle. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but it gets you perpetual access to things like curve aloft and joint push pull, as well as tools on surface. So that would be my recommendation. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what this tool does. So um, remember that when you want to draw on surfaces right now, especially curved surfaces, that's really hard to do, right? So if I come in here and I try to draw on top of this sphere, you can't really do that. Um, I mean, you could turn the hidden geometry on and then draw across the faces like this, um, but that's kind of a more limited way of doing this. It's more time consuming. Um, it's just not really my favorite way of drawing on surfaces. Tools on surface is a lot better about that because what it does is it um, actually follows along the surfaces um, automatically. So it's got a number of different tools in here, um, allowing you to draw edges and shapes and other things like that. So the first one, the generic tools on surface, that's just gonna pop up Fredo 6's toolbar, and then you can access any of these tools from the left-hand side over here. Usually I end up going specifically for the tools um, directly inside of the toolbar. But um, let's say, for example, that we wanted to draw a line on this surface. Well, what you can do is you just click on this, and notice how you've got this tool active. Well, now you can click and set your base point and then your final point. And notice what this is doing is this is coming in here and it's finding a path between this point and this point on the surface like this, and it's drawing a line. And one of the cool things about that is you can use that in order to draw on the surface. And then when you're done, if you close this in, this is actually going to close in the shape. So this is a lot like working with a flat object, or if you split it out, it splits out the faces, but this does this on surfaces. Now note that there are some, uh, what I would probably call modifiers in here. And so not only can you use this to draw lines, if you click on this button right here, this is also going to create guides on your surface. So your guides are going to be those dotted lines that sit inside of SketchUp. And um, basically what they do is they just give you a visual indicator. So if you need to draw any kind of guide on a surface, you can use this in order to do that. You can also set this to set construction points at vertices by clicking on this button right here. So basically what that's going to do is every vertex is going to add a construction point in here. So if you do want to see those better, or if you need something that's a little easier to inference to, you can use those construction lines in order to do that, or the uh, construction points. And so in addition, you've also got the ability to draw these in a group. So what that means is that means if I draw a line in here, like this, when I'm done, Notice how instead of drawing this on this surface and splitting it out, what it's going to do instead is it's going to create that new geometry inside of a group. And so I don't believe, because there is a tool in here for generate faces, but if you use the generate in a common group, this doesn't appear to be generating the faces in the surfaces. A lot of the time what I might do if I have a surface like this is I might use the tool curve aloft, which is another reason why you might, might want to get that whole bundle, but then you could use the skin tool in order to generate a surface in here like this if you do generate these as a group. And so notice how there's also an option up here for the protractor. And the protractor actually gives you the ability um, to snap to different angles. So if you look at this, right, I can actually move my mouse and this is actually going to snap me to these different angles based on that protractor. Um, you can also type in a length and then an angle if you decide that you want to do that. Um, so usually the, the angle actually shows up whether you 
have the protractor tool active or not. So I'm not 100% sure I would use this a whole lot. So we do have the option up here for generate faces. I'm not 100% sure what this one does because when I toggled this one on before, um, it didn't generate the face in the grouped object. And if I toggle it off, faces are still created in here. So if I draw in here, right, it still separates out that face on your surface. So honestly, I'm not 100% sure what the generate faces tool does. Okay, and then this last option for generate contour as curves is going to break, basically set your line up so that it's an uninterrupted line on your surface. So if I draw in here, notice how this line that I drew right here shows up as a curve on my surface. If I toggle that off, right, like this, and then I do this, this line is going to be drawn as segments along the uh, surface wherever it's kind of split up on the different, uh, on the different planes in your uh, hidden geometry. So um, you can use that in order to generate these as segments if you want to. Usually I leave this one on. So one other thing to note about this is notice how if we look at the sphere, right, at the 3D geometry in here, um, notice how it's not especially detailed from a topology standpoint, right? So if I triple click on it so that I can see the geometry that's in here, notice how it doesn't have a ton of, uh, it doesn't have a ton of faces making up the surface, meaning that it's not a super smooth sphere on the outside here. Well, what that means is that means that your edges aren't super smooth either because they're broken up based on the faces that they're running over. Um, note that if you create a sphere like this one, which has a lot more surfaces on it, and then you draw on the surface like this, that your line is going to be a lot smoother than your lines over here. So notice how this one, one, two, three, four segments, while this one has 16 segments, so it's a lot smoother. So um, the complexity of the topology that you're drawing over top of is going to affect the smoothness of your lines. And so one thing I think people can kind of forget sometimes is not only does this work on, work on curved surfaces, it would also work on surfaces like this one. So if I take this line and I draw from here, I wanna draw a line all the way up to here, you can use this tool in order to do that. And those edges that you draw, if they do split the faces completely, are going to split these off. Um, so that those are individual faces. So you can definitely use this on these more complex faces like this one in order to quickly split things out. And so these other tools are going to allow you to draw shapes on surfaces. And so the way that that works is you basically set a point and you can set the way that these points work in a second, but this is gonna give you the ability to basically draw these um, on a surface. So it draws a rectangle on the surface. And remember what we talked about before, this is an option that puts you in construction line mode or guide mode, meaning that it's not actually creating a shape that has geometry associated with it. It's just creating a number of different guides. So if you want to create the geometry, then you're gonna come in here and turn this off so that we're in line mode. So now if I'm in line mode, Right? Notice what that's going to do is that's going to split out your surface like this. Now there's a number of different options in here for how you might do that. So if you want this to act more like the SketchUp rectangle tool, for example, you might select this option right here, which is gonna let you set your shape based on the corners rather than the middle. So um, there's a few different options in here for the way that you can draw those um, and you can toggle those right here. So these other options are very similar to the ones that we've had before, right? So construction points of vertices, generate as a common group, uh, generate faces, and generate contours curves. And so if you go into the circle, this is gonna give you the ability to set your circle by your center point or your diameter like this. So the first one is based on the central point. The second one is based on this end right here. You can set the number of segments in the circle. So if you wanted this to be more like a octagon, notice how you can use this to create like an eight sided shape right here. And then these are the same options that we've had before. So there is also the polygon option, which I think is going to be very similar. Um, it just defaults to less segments. Um, you've also got the ability to create an ellipse. So the ellipse, is going to give you the ability, it's just one more thing that you can set. And so this is gonna give you the ability to set not only how long this is, but also how wide or the bulge of the circle as well. And then this last option is going to generate a parallelogram, which I don't think that I've ever actually been in a situation where I needed to generate a parallelogram on a surface, but this does give you the ability to do it if you wanna do that. So you've also got options in here for drawing arcs 
and some other kinds of circles. So the arc is pretty simple, but I can see this one being really valuable. What it does is it allows you to select points on a surface and then draw an arc. So it works a lot like the SketchUp three-point arc tool, but in this situation, what it does is it draws that along the surface. Note that you can type in a value for the bulge. So if I wanted this to be like a five-foot bulge or something like that, um, you can use this in order to draw that. Now. Um, one thing to note about this, and we didn't really talk about it before, but note that this is splitting this out into different faces, meaning that you can like draw different materials on the surfaces or place different materials on the surfaces once you've split them out. So the three point circle tool, I've never really used this one all that much, but basically what it does is it allows you to set three points and then create a circle that runs through all three of those points like this. So if you're looking for that different way to create a circle, um, this could definitely work for you. And then it just does the same thing where it splits up those surfaces like this. And then finally, we do have a pie tool that acts a lot like the pie tool in SketchUp. So that's going to allow you to do exactly what it sounds like. You set a couple points and then you set the number of degrees that are in here for your pie like this. All right, so now let's take a look at one of my favorite tools contained inside of Tools on Surface, and that would be the ability to offset on a surface. And so what that's going to do is that's going to let me activate this tool, and then I can find a surface and I can actually do an offset inward or outward like this. So if I do want to create an inset on a surface, this is a great place to start. And so if you pair this with something like joint push pull from Fredo 6, what that's going to do is that's going to give you the ability to actually offset and then push pull on the surface like this, which is another reason that I recommend getting the entire Fredo 6 suite because when you put these together, right, it gives you the ability to do some really interesting things that you might not be able to do otherwise. And so you do have some different options in here for the kinds of contour selection that goes on. So like for example, if I select this one, notice how that's going to select both the inside and outside contours, and you're going to be able to place both of those at the same time. So um, there are options for doing multiple offsets at once on your surface like this. And so if you take a look at the manual, um, which I'll link to in the notes down below, the Simplify Contours tool is basically designed um, to give you something that gives you a better result if you've got a more complex surface. So as a general rule, we, I usually leave the Simplify Contours just turned on um, under the Contours option right here. I just usually leave this on. And so honestly, I don't fully understand the option for treat as a loan contour. So if I look at the documentation, it looks like basically what it does is it tells the uh, surface that you have selected to ignore the rest of the model and act as if this was standalone, um, which would give you a result like this. I don't fully understand that because then it seems like I could just use the offset tool in order to do this. So this is a tool that I don't 100% understand, so I don't really use it that often. Um, and the other options are going to be similar to what we talked about before. So we do also have a freehand tool if you just want to draw on the surface like this. Um, I rarely have a situation where I would actually want to do this, but um, if you do want to do that, um, there is a tool that allows you to do that. Um, note that there is a polyline or a point and click function, meaning you can come in here and click instead of having it automatically draw those lines if you decide that you want to do that. And so we do have this option for lock inference mode, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure what this one does either. Um, so I think it might let you pick an inference in a certain direction, but I'm not really 100% sure. So um, I'm not really sure how that particular function works because it doesn't seem to like lock me in a direction or anything like that. So I'm not sure exactly how the lock in inferencing function is supposed to work in this tool. Um, I find that I'm rarely using the freehand tool anyway, so I haven't really dove that deep on that one. All right, so one other cool tool that we have on here is we have the ability to edit your contours on surface. And basically what that's going to do is when you click on it, you can mouse over any edge that you've placed in here with tools on surface and you can actually move the contours around. So notice how when I do that, this stays on the surface. So that could be a really valuable tool if you're looking to make some tweaks or something like that. Having the ability to actually make change and move the vertices around and have them retain um, the fact that they're locked on a surface is definitely something where uh, it's, it's definitely valuable to have a tool that allows you to go back and make some changes later. And then finally, we've got a tool in here that you can use to erase those edges on surface 
like this. Um, I'm not 100% sure what would make this different than the regular SketchUp Erase tool. Um, maybe it retains surfaces better. I'm not really sure on that one, but we do have that function in here if you do want to use it. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about tools on Surface. I will link to a video on this page that I did about all of Fredo 6's extensions if you want to check it out. I'll also link to tools on Surface in the notes below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.